hello there everybody welcome back to today's video no intro jam because uh, it's gonna be kind of a, a longer lesson today i've got something important i want to kind of show you guys that was really really uh eye-opening and it's just been so influential on me my entire life i use it all the time i mean people ask me what i see on the fingerboard this is what i see and um you know other than that we're gonna dive onto this one the tabs are down below so let's just go ahead and jump on into this <laughs> So what's the bad habit today? Looking at one string at a time. Ooh, it's a, it's a hard habit to break. We are gonna get on it. I got something for you. I got you. Now I'm gonna show you one position of the G major scale, the way that I look at it, but um, you know, without really knowing all of them, this lesson might be difficult to kind of visualize what I'm talking about. So I recommend learning your G major scale across your entire fingerboard and then utilizing something like this lesson to really build off of. So um, here's the way that I kind of view the scale. I'm gonna go third fret on the low E string. It, it's a very simple pattern. It goes three, five, seven on the low E and the A. Four, five, seven on the D and G. And then five, seven, eight on the B and the high E string. Okay. And that's just the G major scale. Uh, and if you dig this lesson at all, um, I'm going to have a theory course coming out probably early next year. So um, I've been working on lots and lots of different course ideas. And uh, like I said, if you dig this, you know, then maybe you'll uh, dig on that course too. But yeah, learn that G major scale and learn all the shapes of it. This is all G major everywhere I'm playing. You know, you really want to have it... about something that um, I think is a, a crippling, not no bad habit, mistake, whatever you want to call it. Because um, you know, there's, there's no wrong way to play guitar, play whatever you want. But I know something that really like just changed everything for me. And that was when I started viewing multiple strings at the same time. Uh, versus, you know, like a scale, to me, um, part of the issue with a scale is that we end up thinking there's so much time spent on one string. You know, like if you go like this, we'll, we'll do the key of a G. We're gonna work out a G today. Oh, maybe if I had volume. Now think about think about that for a second here. Um, I'm gonna turn this down. Uh, we had three notes on each string. There's a lot of time spent thinking about that one string. And what, what happens next is, well, you think of the next string. Then you think of the next string. And it's always thinking one string at a time. Now, what I'm, exactly I'm talking about here is, uh, you know, I've, I've heard people say, now I've never learned the cage system, but people have said that um, I share similarities with the way that I view the, the fretboard with the cage system. So I'm going to show you some shapes that overlap and some shapes that I've never seen in the cage system. Um, so what I'm talking about here is taking, you can literally start anywhere in the scale, start anywhere in your G major scale on any string, and it works like this no matter what you do. So like, uh, if we're, uh, let's kind of work out in the middle of the neck here for a second. So out of G major, we have uh, seven main chords. You know, they have seven notes. And each one of those notes, you can kind of like associate with a chord. You got that nice diminished there at the end. Um, but what, what happens is, like I said, you know, I, I don't think of the scale like this. Uh, I think much more diagonal, you know, across the whole scale. Uh, this is really how I'm viewing uh, these scales. I, I see them very diagonal, like I said. So start anywhere. We're going to start on the A string, for example, and you're going to play fifth fret on the A string. Now the next note we're going to play is going to be on one string lower and just one note back in the scale. I'll show you the shape, and then once you get it down, you just start seeing them everywhere. So five there, so that's your D note. And we're gonna go to four on the D, and then two on the G. So this shape, now I know this is part of the cage system, I think that's your, your C shape, even though this is a D major chord right now. And like I said, I've never learned the cage system, I'm just best guess here at this point. Now what happens is, so take this shape, okay? Now what you're gonna do is you're going to move every finger up one note in the scale and your shape will for this instance will stay the same I'm sorry well for, uh, for this next one is going to change okay so the five is going to go up to the seven 
four is gonna go up to five, and then your two is gonna go up to four. Same three strings, but we end up with this sh shape. Okay? So we went from here, moved everything up one note in the scale. Okay? So what you're actually doing is you're going from your five chord, your D major, up to your six, which is E minor. And I don't know if this shape is in the cage system. Like I said, um, I'm not sure. It doesn't look like anything, uh, like a C-A-G-E-D. But what happens is the next one up, so, okay. Now, like I said, you do have to know your full G major scale. I probably should have said that sooner. <laughs> but um, if, if you know your uh, full G major scale all over the place, this is going to help a bunch. So the next one, well, the next in line is our, would be our F sharp note, which in the key of G, that's diminished. So let's move everything up one note in the scale. So again, I'm not even thinking so much in chords. I'm thinking of the scale, and I just happen to know the theory behind it, so I also know the chord. So uh, the seventh fret on the A, well, our next note in line is nine, okay? Then my five on the D, well, the next note in line would be seven on the D. And then I was playing four on the G, the next note in line is five on the G. Okay? Get this cool sounding diminished chord. All over the place. And what you're gonna notice is, and, and like I said, I'll show you, you can do this on any string you want. And it follows this pattern. Uh, the, the chords stay in the same order, I should say. Some of the pattern, like shapes are different. But like I said, what's fascinating is that you're playing chords without even knowing it. You know, like I said, I'm just thinking of the scale. Okay? Next one up, after seven, you go back to one, because there's only seven notes. So you're gonna go like this. It's the same shape we started with. So let's move everything up one note in the scale. So I go from nine up to 10 on the A. Seven on the D goes up to nine. And then that five that was on the G, well, that's gonna go up to seven. Oh, look at this. We know that shape. You start recognizing shapes and your hand just gets familiar with a lot of this stuff. Okay, so that's actually, finally, our one chord out of all of this. And again, this is just how I'm seeing it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong or anything. This is just what helped me. I stopped playing like this all the time. I still, you, trust me, learning how to do it this new way will never inhibit your ability to play a scale like a scale. <laughs> I, I guarantee it. Uh, you can always go back to that whenever you want it, because some situations just call for that sound. Now let's keep going. So the next chord in line is A minor. Okay? So we're going to go like this. You're going to go, 10 is going to go up to 12, and then we're going to go um, from 9 up to 10 on the D, and then our, uh, what is this, seventh fret on the G will go up to nine. Because I said, again, I'm just moving up in the scale. That's all I'm doing. Okay? And there's that second shape. Remember when we did the E minor? It's the same thing. Like I said, you start seeing these shapes constantly repeat themselves throughout all of this. A minor. So that A minor is your two, so our next chord in line should be B minor, which is your three. So all you have to do is move this up, two frets, same shape. Now, again, let's you kind of break it down a little bit so we can visualize it. So let's move everything up one note in the scale. So 12, which is our A note, is gonna go up to the B. Okay, so 12 is going to 14. 10 is going up to 12, and then your nine is going up to 11. Okay? Now we have one more that we're gonna do, and then it just starts repeating ourselves because we're in an octave. As we're gonna go up here to a C major chord, which is your four. So, you know, arguably, one, four, five is like one of the most crucial positions to know. So know your G, know your C, and know your D. Um, but we're gonna go like this. So we have to go to a C major. Now our pinky, that A string 14th fret is gonna go up to 15. Okay, 12 is gonna go up to 14. And then our 11 is gonna go up to 12. So we end up with this. Same shape we started with. We did it there, we did it again on G, and we did it again here on C. And you can keep going. 
all the way through the scale and you're just gonna keep repeating those shapes. So once you learn those three main shapes here on these three strings, you kind of start seeing them repeat all over the place. The diminished one changes uh, a little bit and, and when you get to the G, B, and high E string, they all change. But what's sweet is they all follow the same pattern. It never ends. The pattern is always the same. So we go, um, What I was talking about before is that you could start anywhere. Pick any three strings. It, I'm, I'm telling you, it literally doesn't matter. Uh, the hardest ones are probably the G, B, and the high E string. So let's just start somewhere. Start down here, uh, we'll start with the B note. Okay, and I'm gonna build the next uh, two notes behind it. Okay, so that is a B minor chord, which out of the key of G would be your three. So the next number in line or chord would be your four, which is going to be your C major chord. Now let's see if I if I was telling the truth, if I was lying to you. Would you lie to me, honey? Because uh, I don't think I was. Uh, here we go. I oh, know I think I was telling the truth. I don't think I was lying. Uh, we're gonna take each one of these notes, move them up one in the scale. So that B note is gonna go up to a C note now. So that goes from four on the G to five. Before we were playing three on the B, that one actually is gonna move all the way up to five on the B. Two on the high E string is gonna go up to three. Now let's see if I was telling the truth. Is that a C chord? Hmm. Good golly, Miss Molly, it sure is a C chord. So let's break it down. There's your C, there's your third, and there's your fifth. That's all it is. There's your third, root, third, fifth. Root, third, fifth. So, the cool thing about this is, this is a movable shape. All over the place. So the next one in line should be our D major chord. Well, let's try it, you know? This is gonna slide up five, goes up to seven, five goes up to seven, three goes up to five. D major, I kinda went through that one fast, it's the same shape. Now we venture back into some tricky territory. We gotta go to an E minor chord now. That's our sixth chord. Okay, so let's see if, if uh, we're you know still on track. Seven goes up to nine on the G, moving up one note in the scale. That seven on the B will go up to eight. And five goes up to seven. Is it an E minor? Sure is. There's our E. Minor third. Fifth, right there. Okay? And you can keep going with this one. Like I said, uh, I don't know if, if it's getting like boring or not. But you can go all over the place. Now this is how I view the scale, like I said. I'm seeing a very diagonal version of the scale. And I can pull on the knowledge of the chords whenever I need to. But the majority of the time, I'm not thinking necessarily in chords and stuff. I'm thinking much more in terms of melodies. Uh, and, and just being melodic. Like if I played a chord, my instinct isn't, oh, I'm gonna outline the chord. I wanna, I wanna do that. No, I, I hear it and I'm like, okay, what, what's the melody that I'm hearing? I'll say that these are the, these are my chords. Okay, I might play over those and I might kind of be like, something like that. To me, that I'm thinking in terms of melodies and playing over very melodically. I'm not trying to think too much about it. So the reason that you get such an advantage when you start learning how to do this kind of stuff is that you don't have to think so much about moving around on the fingerboard. At least this is how it's worked for me. Like I said, I don't really think, like if you just practice stuff like this. Whoa, wow, I played it so bad. If you just do that kind of stuff all the time, this whole diagonal approach and having these larger intervals between your notes, it's so difficult. It really uh, it becomes a challenge to do it because you're just, 
you're just not used to it. You know, like all of a sudden they want you to go all over the place and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not used to that. You know, diminished stuff, whatever you want. Um, this diagonal approach has really helped me out a bunch. So hopefully that was helpful in a little bit to you. I, like I said, I don't know. You guys said you were interested in more of these theory ones. So that's a big way that I'm seeing the fingerboard. I don't know if that's cage system or what it is. It's just something that I noticed on the guitar um, many years ago and I just kept doing with it. And then uh, I'll, I'll leave off with one th final thing here is that by learning these simple triads, it makes it really easy to turn them into, you know, more advanced four note chords or whatever it is. Like I said, you could easily turn this G right here into an add nine, you know, a sus four, a, uh, um, a sus two. I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can turn it into a, a major nine, whatever you want. But um, other than that, guys, I'm going to bounce on out of here. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. Get the tabs and uh, yo, I'll see you all. We'll see you tomorrow with a live stream, but then uh, Monday with a new video. Bye guys. Whoop! Oh, I forgot. I want to play you guys some rhythm. I'm going to play you some rhythm based around just some G major stuff and uh, try some of the stuff we did today. Take a couple shapes and try to move between them and try to improvise and play melodically. So see you guys.